Greetings, nerdlings, and welcome to Amalgam Nation Presents World of Lorecraft, Weaponcraft, Blades of the Fallen Prince Edition. Crafted by the Burning Legion to corrupt the world of Azeroth, the soul-stealing runeblade Frostmourne was shattered by Ashbringer atop Icecrown Citadel. Countless souls were freed from the broken blade, but others were not so fortunate. Today, the shards of Frostmourne can be recrafted and infused with even more power. However, the spirit still trapped within must first be subdued and bent to the wielder's will. In-game lore book for Blades of the Fallen Prince Before Icebringer and Frost Reaper, there was only Frostmourne. The name alone is enough to chill the hearts of the living. Few weapons have shaped as much of modern history as this one. Frostmourne spilled the blood of kings and destroyed nations. The scars it inflicted on the world remain to this day. Icebringer and Frost Reaper will always carry this history with them, but they will not follow in Frostmourne's path. They will make their own future. As one legacy ends, so another begins. The tales of Frostmourne are many, but they all trace back to the Lich King. The Burning Legion moulded this spectral entity for one purpose, to spread a plague of undeath across Azeroth. Deep within the trackless wastes of Northrend, the Lich King began this dark task. His influence crept over the world like a shadow and manipulated mortal minds to serve him as agents of undead. The Lich King also possessed other worldly artifacts to achieve his goal. Among them was the demon-forged runeblade Frostmourne. The weapon could consume the souls of its victims, imprisoning their spirits within the blade. It could also remake the living into mindless undead servants. Yet to harness these extraordinary powers, the Lich King required a mortal vessel to wield Frostmourne. In the young human prince Artis Menatil, he would find such a vessel. Lordaeron was the first region crippled by the plague of undeath. The affliction claimed entire families and villages as it tortured the human kingdom. The victims found no peace in death. They rose from the grave as mindless undead creatures called the Scourge. Prince Artis Mental vowed to stop these horrors at any cost. He undertook ever more extreme measures in pursuit of this goal. Eventually, against the wishes of his closest allies, he embarked on a reckless search for the plague's source in Northrend. Their fate led him to Frostmourne. Though Artis knew the Runeblade was cursed, he believed he could use its powers for good. He was wrong. Upon taking up Frostmourne, and Artis succumbed to the Lich King's iron will. The prince's sanity unraveled, and the rune blade gorged on his soul. He became the first of the Lich King's death knights. From the journal of Captain Falric, royal guard to Prince Artis Menethil. There is something unsettling about Frostmourne. Something cold tugs at my heart whenever I am near the weapon, but I cannot deny its power. No one can. Not after this last battle. Artis led us into the stronghold of that unholy creature called Malganus. We could barely keep up with the prince. He never seemed to tire, never seemed afraid. With that strange blade in his hand, he ripped through the undead. Even Malganus stood no chance against the prince. A great victory, but I am in no mood to celebrate. Artis has been acting strange of late. After the battle, he disappeared into the icy wastes. For what reason, I cannot say. I will soon go find him. From Chapter 3 of The Fall of Lordaeron and the Scourging of the East Wild, written by Royal Historian Arcasonus. Prince Artis returned from Northrend to a hero's welcome. Bells tolled as the people of Lordaeron cheered their beloved prince. No one knew that he had lost his soul to Frostmourne. No one knew that he had slain his own soldiers in Northrend and converted them into undead. In the capital city's throne room, Artis knelt before his father and liege, King Tyrannus II. It was to be a reunion of joy, but it ended in tragedy. The prince plunged Frostmourne through his father's heart. The blade drained Tyrannus' soul, as it would do to many others. With one stroke of the cursed weapon, Artis destroyed more than a king. He destroyed an entire nation. All of Lordaeron soon fell to the dark prince and his scourge. As Artis and the Scourge swept over Lordaeron, panic seized the living. Though many humans gave in to despair, some looked to the holy paladins for salvation. Uther the Lightbringer was the greatest of these righteous warriors. If anyone had the power to stop the fallen prince, it was him. 
In the city of Vanderhall, the two met in battle that would decide Lordaeron's fate. Frostmourne clashed with Uther's legendary hammer of the Lightbringer. Each weapon blow erupted in a shower of warring energies. It was a struggle between light and darkness, between life and death. Death prevailed. Frostmourne cleaved through Uther's gilded armour and devoured his virtuous soul, and with that Artis extinguished the last ray of hope that remained for Lord Oran's people. The list of Frostmourne's victims is long. Nearly everyone killed by the Runeblade suffered the same dark fate. The weapon feasted on their broken souls and locked them within Frostmourne itself. Ranger General Sylvanus Windrunner was an exception. When the Scourge invaded the High Elf Kingdom of Queltalas, she led a fierce resistance. Her brilliant tactics stymied Artis and his unholy forces at every turn. She fought with the courage and valour of a true hero. When at last Sylvanus fell in battle, she did not receive the hero's debt she deserved. Artis punished the ranger general for her stubborn opposition. He used Frostmourne to rip Sylvanus's soul from her body, and then he transformed her spirit into an incorporeal banshee. The death of the High Elf King, Anisterian Sunstrider, as recounted by Magister Hathorel, that rabid dog artist came to quell to last for one reason, to steal the power of our glorious Sunwell. We did everything to stop him, everything, and still Artis and his full army marched on. It was in those final moments that our great king, Anastarian, appeared. He bore the legendary blade, fellow Malorn, dead and living alike, stopped and watched as Anastarian dueled Artis. Old though he was, my king held his own. He pushed Artis to his limits. But even fellow Malorn was no match for Frostmourne. Artis cleaved Anastarian's ancient blade in two. Then with a single ruthless strike, the dead knight ran my king through. I wanted to fight on, but I knew in my heart that it was all over. Everyone did. Not even the mighty Saffron was safe from Frostmourne's bite. This wise blue dragon was a master of arcane magic, and one of the greatest of his kind who had ever lived. For many ages he and his loyal draconic servants stood guard over a trove of extraordinary relics in Northrend. It was these relics that drew Artis's attention to Saffron. The Death Knight and his Scourge minions invaded the Dragon's Lair to pilfer its treasures. The battle that followed would become one of legend. Saffron and his fellow dragons unleashed the full fury of their arcane might on Artis, but he would not be denied his prize. The Death Knight overwhelmed his ancient foes and slew them one by one, calling on Frostmourne's powers. Artis then transformed Saffron into an undead Frostworm. In his new form, Saffron would become one of the Scourge's most terrifying weapons. Few cross blades with Artis and lived to tell the tale, but the demon Illidan Stormrage was one of them. With a mighty army at his back, Illidan stormed across Northrend to destroy the Lich King. He advanced through sleet and snow toward Icecrown Citadel, frozen capital of the Scourge. Upon finally reaching his destination, Illidan found the Death Knight Artis and the undead barring his way. As living and dead waged war upon each other, Elden and Artis grappled in single combat. Armed with the mighty war glaives of Azanoth, Elden assailed the Death Knight from all sides. The keening of their blades splintered the ice and shook the halls of the Lich King's citadel. Though evenly matched, Artis gained the upper hand. Frostmourne tore through Elden's flesh, nearly killing him. The demon escaped with his life, but his wound would never truly heal. Years later, it would still ache from Frostmourne's icy touch. With Illidan defeated and his army routed, Artis took the final step to seal his damnation. He became one with the Lich King, his mind and soul merging with the powerful spectral entity. In that moment, Artis the Death Knight was no more. He became the Avatar of Death itself. Artis had bested all of his adversaries, and now his powers had increased by orders of magnitude. It seemed that none could stand against the new Lich King, but there was one who did. His name was Tyrion Fordring, and he wielded a holy blade known as the Ashbringer. At the second battle for Lightsoap Chapel, Tyrion confronted Artis and showed the world that he was not invincible. With a mighty blow from the Ashbringer, he forced the Scourge Ruler to retreat. It was not the last time Frostborn would clash with the Ashbringer. When next the two blades met, only one would remain unbroken. No king rules forever. 
A top Ice Crown Citadel artist would learn that lesson. To destroy the Lich King and his scourge once and for all, Azeroth's nations launched a massive campaign at the Northrend. The bloody war culminated in a siege on Ice Crown Citadel itself. Armed with the Ashbringer, Tyrion Fordring led some of the world's greatest champions deep into the stronghold. In the frenzied assault that followed, Tyrion once again met Artis in battle. The Ashbringer clashed against Frostmourne, steel howling like a bitter winter wind. After a single bone-shaking strike, Tyrion did what so many other great heroes had failed to do. He shattered Frostmourne. He ended Artis's reign. The breaking of Frostmourne unleashed many of the souls trapped within the Runeblade. It also freed Artis from the sword's domination. According to Tyrion Fordring, the Fallen Prince's last words were, I see only darkness before me. Thank you for watching, and as always, remember, play the game and game to play.